let's go ahead and get into this because I thought it was so interesting. So really fast, I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'm just going to play the part that I thought was the most pertinent to this particular uh, stream, which was Ethan and Ela's reaction to Jake Doolittle's apology. And then we'll get into the crux of what I really want to talk about, which is like medical misinformation, which is really difficult to understand as a lay person. But I want to ask the question, if you have a feeling your doctor might be wrong, when do you decide to seek out different medical advice? Or if your doctor gets their license revoked, which is what happened in Jake Doolittle's situation, when do you get a, re a new diagnosis, right? When do you ask yourself that question? Or do you just go with the first diagnosis you get because it makes you feel the most seen? And I think there's a big part of this that is mental health that is obviously, you know, you need a therapist for. And again, I'm not hearing a lot of therapy talk here, which is kind of what I think is missing. But I, again, you know, I'm not a therapist. You're not a therapist. So it's like, okay, fine. This is them reacting. I thought this part was just kind of worth going over really fast. Thing I want to reiterate my apology to everyone affected by this video. The tone was inappropriate and scummy, and that does not reflect the values that I wish to embody as a content creator. I've taken this as a learning experience, and I will commit to never repeating this mistake. From now on, I'm going to refocus my efforts on the content that brought you to my channel in the first place. Your support means the world to me, and I appreciate every single one of you, and I thank you for your understanding during this time where I try to learn and grow from this experience what do you think about okay. Enzo I kind of like Enzo yeah it's kind of interesting um so here's the thing like <clears throat> overall I, it's fine not bad it's fine. Not bad. fine I like it like I I'm fine I'm not gonna hold a grudge go yeah. you know what I mean like just I'm fine. just <laughs> let's all move on it's you know what I mean the one thing though is like <clears throat> uh, first of all I appreciate that energy already it's fine it's good enough uh, like a lot of you in my comments pointed out when I originally reacted to it, obviously it would have been better if Jake also made an effort to recognize the lies that he told about Ethan. And I think that's the most hurtful part is that he slandered Ethan's reputation with no reason or rhyme. And I think that's what's so hurtful as content creators in general is when people make stuff up about you, but also their perception also reinforces their belief about you. So Jake admits his personal uh, relationship with his sickness probably reinforced his beliefs about Ethan. The question is, did he change his beliefs or not? And that's what's difficult to recognize. He made the mistake, which he, he acknowledges. But, like, the details is really hard to get over. Like, he, he had so many opportunities to get off the ramp. Mm. AB warned him, specifically reached out to him. Mm. All the comments, everybody. And then now that it's backfired, and then he kept it up for three weeks. It's really common amongst content creators to feel very, very confident about misinformation, mostly because, again, in their subconscious or in their consciousness, it feels very, very real. And it's hard to even start having the conversation about it. I tend to not have the conversation. If there's too much misinformation, I tend to ignore the people because you know what I mean. But Jake, to be fair, I think got a lot of attention because of this video. So Ethan probably felt a need to talk about it and just counter the bad ideas I tend not to want to give I don't want to give people attention when they are so full of misinformation but I still obviously approve of Ethan's decision to defend himself mm -hmm. also like I wish he gave me more said more specific apologies this is like I'm just saying this as an A plus recipient right of things that he could have done to improve mm -hmm. his score <laughs> um, <clears throat> being specific like Accusing me of lying about my health to right. make money. Mm. This was not something that- Huge lie, right? Violet says, you say therapist a, therapist a lot. What kind of therapist do you mean with that word? I don't know how to answer that question. A therapist. Wait, I don't know how to answer that question. I don't think I understand the question. Just a therapist. Like- a person who does therapy, like a therapist, um, a scientist, therapist, a, like a therapist. I don't know. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, you know, when you go to a therapist, a therapist, I'm not sure how to answer your question. I'm so sorry. That was ever addressed. I did not or I was never lying and I never did anything to make money. And like, uh, you know, bringing out the Excel sheet and all that stuff yeah. was pretty dirty. Yeah. Sending yeah. my yeah. my blood work to a doctor to diagnose me is is utterly insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think Jake really missed the mark by not going into detail. You know what I mean? I think that's a mistake, you know. Insane. Insane. 
He did mention that one, though. He, didn't he didn't mention know? that. I don't think so. Oh, maybe he? misremembering? He did not mention that. He said okay. something about blood work. Uh, I don't know what it... I don't yeah, maybe I misunderstood what he, he was saying He just said seeing there. it is concerning. Yeah. Seeing uh, abnormal blood work is concerning. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is very interesting. Uh, Violet says a real therapist or a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Mental health therapist, a trained professional. Yeah, I just, well, okay, so maybe I'm, a therapist can be a psychiatrist, social worker, a marriage or family therapist. Okay, when I say therapist, I mean somebody who specializes in mental health related work and can help you with your mental health specifically. So I don't mean an MD. I don't mean like a gynecologist. I mean a therapist. So I guess I'm using it as a catch-all for anybody who specializes in mental health from the medical like prescription side to the diagnosis side to the evaluation side to the side of seeking someone to talk to about your problem. So that's what I mean. I mean anybody in the medical field who specializes and has gone to school to figure out how to work on and improve someone's mental health. That's what I mean when I say therapist. Shouldn't mm. have said anything about it, yeah. I think. I agree that's a good point because those are those were such heavy accusations. Yes, dude. Like insane. That's that what pissed me off. He should like, have dude, said mm -hmm. I was wrong about this and this and this mm -hmm. more specifically. And then also his like the, the way he sat there and pretended to be a fucking doctor and was like Oh, yeah. well, he has a positive ANA. Well, according to what I googled, he's a, this is actually doesn't mean anything. And it's like, no, you're wrong. Right. Like yeah. you're you're actually just giving medical misinformation. You're wrong maliciously. However, with all that being said, you know, I think it's fine. I think I think, he, fine. I I think he's sorry. I think it's better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's better than nothing. Yeah. Which is good. Which wrong. is saying a lot for most apologies. Most apologies on YouTube are not better than nothing. <laughs> right. I, I would have appreciated a little, just a, just a, a tiny little footnote. Uh, also, a <laughs> I was like, whoa, AB hasn't slept in months. <laughs> it's makeup. It's makeup. I like that everyone's dressed up in the clothes. That's kind of cute. AB, sorry for putting you in an awkward situation. He <laughs> absolutely <laughs> owes you an apology. Yeah, I thought, you know, I pinned a comment on my original video and I said maybe it would have been nice if he sent a letter to the H3 team you know, more personal to them. But I, I'm not sure that they, I mean, I'm sure they would accept it. But, you know, I also understand. I, I think it would have been really nice, you know, the, the apology was fine for YouTube. But as a personal apology, it would have been really nice, I think, if they maybe got a letter or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you try to fucking warn him and then he used it yeah. against us, you, yeah. the fact that he to weaponize it. That's apology. Said that in his video, and people obviously figured out that it was you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Crystal says hi. I hope everyone's having a great day. Thank you, Crystal. I hope the same for you. Fifty bucks along with it. Thank you, Queen. People really like Enzo, by the way. Enzo. Enzo. Oh, Enzo. 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 But everyone's gonna be like, "Are you like Italian?" The kid from Every Reboot. person he meets in his life will ask him if he's Italian. <sighs> You're Italian. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, we're good you. there. That's a deep cut. Now, okay, so that's like they they took it really well. They had a good reaction to it. Da, 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 da. Well, one of you guys in the comment section of my video left me a note saying that the doctor that diagnosed chronic Lyme and Jake had his license revoked. And I was like, really? Because I think that's interesting. If I got a diagnosis from a doctor who got his license revoked, I would probably want to seek a new diagnosis. Now, I know that Jake grew up in a dysfunctional background and probably didn't have a lot of resources growing up and maybe didn't even know to get reassessed. But I think it's interesting that he's holding true to a diagnosis that has a lot of controversy within the medical community. I think if chronic Lyme only had issues outside of the medical community, that'd be different. Like I have fibro. And a lot of people outside of medicine call it an invisible illness, but within medicine is recognized as a as a real illness, right? So I think there's something here that I think is interesting about how different brains work and why we make the decisions that we make. So again, I don't want to moralize it. I don't want to send hate towards Jake. I don't want to be rude towards him. I just want to say it out loud for the people in my audience. Hey, kind of interesting that you might be in a situation where you get a diagnosis and then you hear the doctor that diagnosed you got their license revoked for malpractice and maybe we could have a conversation about trusting people just because they're doctors, but also um, allowing ourselves options to be sick in a different way or maybe to get healed in another. You know, if I was Jake, I would ask myself, well, damn, 
if chronic Lyme isn't really seen as a, a valid sort of illness, but I still feel sick and the doctor who diagnosed me is getting his license revoked, maybe I have something else. Maybe he has fibro. You know, excuse me, he could, that he has more of the symptoms of fibro that, you know, maybe, I don't know that, you know, no, no, no. so again, I don't, I don't want to send hate towards Jake. He already got enough of it. Um, but I just, you know, I thought this part of the story was interesting. So I thought we'd go over it together. So there's a podcast that he did where he talks about that doctor. And I thought we could watch a little bit of it together. Um, before I jump into that, a couple questions from chat says, uh, Marky says, I've heard that chronic Lyme isn't valid because they claim they didn't get Lyme from a tick, which Lyme is literally from ticks. Yeah, you know, see, I'm, you know, again, I'm not a medical professional, just a person trying to figure it out, you know? I'm not sure. And says, what is your stance to responding to hit pieces, something like Jake did, but directed at you? How would you handle it? Well, I mean, I've got them all the time about me on the internet. Um, if it has substance, I'm happy to respond. I usually leave comments in people's comment sections if they make videos about me criticizing my work because I, I do enjoy the criticism. But if the hit piece has too many lies, I usually just ignore it because I know they want my attention. <laughs> I'm a, you know... <laughs> I just know they want my attention, so I usually deny them that attention. If it ever became an issue, like it threatened my job or my livelihood, then of course I would be more than happy to like make a nice little, you know, reaction video. Um, but if I see a hit piece on me and no offense, like all of it is made up. If they have to make things up about me in order to find anything on me, then I'm not giving them the time of day, which is usually what ends up happening in the hit pieces against me is they usually have to make something up about me. Like, I can't believe, like, my my own viewers know. Like, sometimes my Discord will share a video and be like, how could they not know this about Britney? And I'm like, I talk about my life so openly. So if there's so much misinformation in the video where even my own viewers are like, okay, but, like, none of this is true. She's, like, this is literally not her content. Then, of course, I'm not going to respond to it, right? I'm more concerned about my viewers, you know, having a confusion or my audience having a misunderstanding but if my audience knows it's bullshit then like why am I responding to it it's kind of my philosophy oh uh therapy dirt says my mom has chronic Lyme it's weird but she can only feel better on a consistent round of antibiotics of course it's very possible it's another problem but the bacteria sticks interesting interesting okay JR says as someone who had Lyme disease as a kid my understanding is that chronic Lyme isn't a thing per se but Lyme can cause long-term dystonia dystonia even after cured i i read that it's similar to like oh no no no. uh the woman who originally left me a comment said in her message to me that uh it kind of mimics long covid so it has like symptoms that linger so i definitely don't want to accuse anyone of being like fakely sick i obviously think there's a sickness the question is what would you do if you were in his position and learning about the doctor that treated you getting their license revoked. I think that's the question I want to ask ourselves. Not Jake, leave him alone, but ourselves. Like, what do you think this would do? Do you think this would change um, your mind? You know what I mean? Like, do you think this would change how you saw yourself? So look at this podcast. This is called um, episode 49. Uh, to... Oops, Certified Lime Boy with Jake Doolittle. This is the Mr. Friendship Podcast. I'll go ahead and link it in chat. You guys can go ahead and check them out. I'm sure he's a nice person. Here it is. Ready? Honestly, I went to like three months of uh, of high school and then uh, went downhill again. Things started to get worse. I started to feel better in between eighth grade and, and freshman year. Um, okay. With and now you're stuff. still like, you're still in a wheelchair at this point? Are you in crutches? Um, in, sort of in and out. In of and a out, wheelchair. okay. And uh, a few months into grade nine, you're not feeling so hot? Not you're... feeling so hot. I had treatment in Connecticut, in Lyme, Connecticut, where Lyme originated. <laughs> It's not I'm sorry, I know nothing. It's I don't, really I don't know weird. much about Lyme. Yeah. But Lyme, L Y M E, Connecticut is where it started. And that's where I didn't know that. I didn't know Lyme started in Connecticut. That's interesting. That's where it's named after. That's mm -hmm. why it's. Because a long time ago, the whole, not the whole town, but it became like an epidemic. Right. Because everybody was getting it. And they were like, what the fuck is happening? And then they all figured out that it's sick bites. Mm. In this one town in Connecticut. Yes. And then it, and then it started to become more and more like understood. Right. Um, but there's a doctor there who helped me a lot. He was a 96-year-old guy. So 96-year-old doctor from Connecticut. Okay. Who wore Adidas tracksuits. Cool. And uh, <laughs> he... Uh, yeah, Jake is a baby, right? Hannah says Jake is still baby 22. Yeah, I think Jake is super, super young, right? I, I remember, like, he would say shit, like... Uh, I, I would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm sad or whatever. And Wait, when was Jake diagnosed? Wait, when was Jake diagnosed? As a baby. He said as a kid, right? Because this doctor got his license revoked 
uh, I think in 2011. I have the medical article here. I'll share it with you guys as well. Or this is the article I was sent, I should say. This is the article someone sent me. So this was in 2011, which is 13 years ago. So Jake would have been, I can't do math. He's 22 now. So this is, yeah, it's Charles Ray Jones is the doctor's name here. He's going to go into it. He's like, when I, I get over sadness by drinking that hard whiskey. <laughs> he's a fucking genius. He's but like a he, doctor. But he would say he's, he was 96 years old wearing yeah. velour track suits. And it was the funniest shit in the world. For sure. And as a, like, and I'm sure you were eating it up as a kid. You were like, this guy's awesome. Yeah. And my like, mom was like, Jesus fucking, like, what the there's, fuck there's is no happening? Like, where you're going to kill my kid. You're <laughs> yeah. going you're, you're to abduct my kid. And, like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm going to find his bones in like 30 <laughs> years or some shit. Like, uh, that's really funny though. So like, yeah. Was he just, so he was just like 90 and he was just like, I'm fucking done. Like, yeah, he, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. So he actually was, um, he, his name's Charles Ray Jones and he's very, very controversial in the, in, in medical stuff because, okay. because Lyme is not seen as being real. He, um, he was sued by the state of, or prosecuted by the state of Connecticut because he was giving medication, uh, that no, not giving medication. So according to this article, hold on. Are this okay? So, this is find law. This is Charles Ray Jones versus Connecticut Medical Examining Board. Apparently, it goes on to say that he was giving out medication to patients that he didn't even meet and a diagnosis. So, two alleged that Dr. Jones failed to make differential diagnosis, failed to make an adequate differential diagnosis, ordered laboratory tests without examining the minor patient or taking her medical history, placed a new patient on antibiotics for four weeks without examining him or, and, or I'm sorry, without examining her and or taking her medical history. So, who knows? Maybe it was an innocent mistake. Maybe he's just 96 years old and he's too old. Maybe a lot of things, right? So again, I don't know if he's actually 96 years old. That's just like what Jake said. I, he could have been he could have been younger. But according to this, it was two issues, two different problems. Um so again, maybe maybe he knows something we don't know. Maybe he did properly di diagnose Jake. Maybe, 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 maybe. Okay, I know modern medicine isn't perfect. A lot of institutions are corrupt. Patriarchy, racism. We can say a whole lot of problems within um, even our medical um, bubbles. But I will say there's something so interesting to me about the idea of knowing this is your doctor and then not getting another diagnosis. So very interesting. You know what I mean? Welcome, welcome, everybody. I see the numbers are going up. I just want to say we are watching Jake Doolittle explain his relationship with his doctor. No hate towards Jake. Leave him alone. He's still a young person. I just want to do this for our sake as a community to ask ourselves the questions of getting medical input, trying to go on that medical diagnosis journey. Who do we know how to, tr you know, who do we trust? How do we have a better relationship with our doctors? So again, he went to Connecticut. He's getting diagnosed by this very elderly doctor who ends up getting his license revoked. He's controversial within the medical scene, which Jake knows. So I'm always I'm just curious if Jake ever tried to get re-diagnosed, try to go to other doctors, or did he get a diagnosis of chronic Lyme and then stay with it and decide that's what he had? Because again, if I found out my doctor got their license revoked, I would go on and I would try to get a new diagnosis just in case my doctor was wrong, right? Medication. He was giving people medication before insurance approved it okay because insurance does so that considered malpractice i guess yes or, okay insurance doesn't approve um i believe that's the story um insurance doesn't approve most lyme stuff because it's not physical and you can't see it right um and so he was just just giving it because he's like i know this will fucking help you like i wow. I, I don't care which is you're 96 wait, you and, and wait and like way to like just like say you know what fuck i, I don't give, give a shit about my practice yeah I'm, that's true like medical like that's someone who just wants to help people he yeah he was amazing but he uh he ended up maybe maybe he just really wants to help people like maybe the doctor really 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 just wants to help people but that's the question we have to ask ourselves as patients okay does he actually want to help people or are we dealing with a doctor who might have misdiagnosed me, right? So, like, that's what I want Jake to ask himself. Did this doctor maybe misdiagnose me? Especially since it was when I was a child. You know what I mean? Uh, having to pay everything that insurance didn't to the wow. state of Connecticut. It was millions. It was millions. Their audio is really low. So, I'm sorry. It's turned up as much as I can on my end. He was the only guy who would, like, who would treat back when I was really, really sick. See? He's the only guy that would treat me back when I was really, really sick. So they went to Connecticut to get a diagnosis from this 96-year-old doctor 
who is very controversial in medical circles, who's got his license revoked, who failed two patients, who did all these things. And then Jake seems, I guess, in, like even the host who's hosting him in this podcast is like, he must really just want to help people. Maybe, absolutely. Maybe he really wants to help people. Or maybe there's some malpractice happening and maybe you're actually getting dis dis uh, or diagnosed incorrectly, which is, oh my gosh, you know? Wow. In like the United States. And it was I was lucky that it was like only five hours away from my house. Um, yeah, well, because if you, could you imagine if you lived on like, on like the West Coast or something and like right. you'd, That'd be fucked. That'd I'll, be the... I'll I'll get to that because then I had a doctor on the West Coast. Oh no. Um, I'm so I'm so sorry if this is like dragging. No no no. Mind. This is like what I love about the podcast is like okay. I like talking about like medical stuff like this. Okay. And I, like as it's it's I've shared all my stuff. So yeah. like hearing like the point is that like we're we're not exposing the 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 the, the, the like we're not, I'm not trying to be like healthcare is bad. No not at all. There like there are lessons to be learned about like yeah. you know there's they missed my brain tumor the first it's time. Okay right? like, it's okay to question. Well, did he have a brain tumor? Is he just using that like hyperbolic or is he, does he mean it? Because like, yeah, like doctors do make mistakes. They do misdiagnose. They do miss your brain tumors. So I'm all open to us because humans are going to human and doctors are humans and we don't need them to be perfect, but we need to be reasonable and rational. But in the same ways that doctors miss your brain tumors, doctors might also misdiagnose you. So, you know. Medical professionals. Yes, yes. And it's okay to be like, you know, do you, and a big part of my thing was like, I kept going. Um, Leo says, wasn't there a thing about his mother's CPS and medical abuse? Yes. So apparently his father, from what I understand, had an issue with the mother and tried to get her, um, basically investigated for child abuse over Jake's sicknesses. And it was a whole issue and they didn't find anything, but Jake also mentioned like Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Is that what's called? Mun Munchausen syndrome? No. What's the one that Gypsy Rose, her mom suffered from? Or that Gypsy Rose suffered from. So again, there's so much that's going into this. Again, I am not here to bully Jake. I am just here to encourage us as people to recognize as a chronically ill girly myself, <laughs> to recognize how difficult it can be to find good doctors, to get the right diagnosis. You know, my do diagnosis went pretty quick. I got it done within a year, a year and a half of getting an official diagnosis. Lots of pain until then, you know, lots of suffering, but finally got a diagnosis. So again, I just want to, you know, encourage people to say, okay, like what is the relationship we're having with this, with this thing we call a diagnosis and are we writing our whole personality on it? Right. So again, not all doctors are perfect people because they're people, you know what I mean? Okay. And says so at what age do you consider someone young, someone not young anymore? If 22, 23 is in fair game, I mean, I think everything is fair game when you're a legal adult, but at the same time. Obviously, like the world, the government itself doesn't treat adults the same. We don't let you run for president until you're 35 in the U.S. Insurance companies hold it against you if you're under 25. You can't drink or smoke cigarettes until you're 21. So realistically, like everything is fair game if you're an adult, I suppose. But at the same time, if we think it's creepy for 50-year-old men to date newly 18-year-old girls, then I think it should be also creepy to bully 18-year-old girls as if they are 25-year-old girls. So I think we should be more reasonable and rational about how we're having these conversations. I certainly was a growing young adult in my early 20s and I made a lot of mistakes. And I'm lucky that I had a lot of adults around me that allowed me to make those mistakes so I could get better. You know what I mean? So again, I'm not a person who's going to hold it against a 22 year old too much. But I'm going to pay more attention as they reach like 30 at this point, especially since over time, like people in different countries, they view ages differently. People have different responsibilities. Um, but I'm certainly going to give a 22-year-old much more leniency than a 30-year-old. You know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? Um, and for that idea that the brain stops developing around 25, studies are showing that neurodivergent people take up to 30. So let's have a conversation about that, right? You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I just don't think it's, you know, black and white. Going to the hospital because I was like, no, something's not yeah. right. And then they finally found my brain tumor. Yeah. You will always know. Yes. More about your body. Like, if they say that something is not happening, it's it's happening. Yes. You know? 100%. Um, yeah. But he was he was great. And then I was on antibiotics for like three years. And then in between eighth grade and ninth grade, I got sick again because they can only last for so long. Right. Um, and then hmm. was sick uh, for like literally like the rest of that year. Uh, and then I found a doctor in Mountain View, California. Okay. At something called the Open Medicine Clinic. And uh, so is this like a new agey type clinic? This yeah, is this more is, like. This is like. So, like, Jake is an alternative medicine person, right? Is that what we're hearing? 
Like, is that what we're hearing? That like, uh, you know, what I, is that what, that's okay, right? I think a lot of Western medicine fails people, but I also believe in one mess Western medicine and I believe that a lot of it helps people. So I'm just, I'm trying to put it together that Jake is a, a less, in, it's weird for him to go for Ethan on a basis of science when everything he's attributing to himself doesn't seem to be on the basis of science. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's weird to see Jake go so hard at Ethan for not having the right medical diagnosis, but everything that Jake is saying right now is all woo-woo stuff. So again, like, I'm all about it. Maybe the woo-woo helps, placebo strong, all of these things. But I just think that I want to open the dialogue in a nice way around misinformation. And also, I'm going to say this out loud, but I don't, I want you to take it with a grain of salt. There's a category of people on the planet who tend to need attention for some reason other than things they've done or created, usually a negative attribute, like one is sick. And I think that Jake might fall into that category maybe because again, his decision to seek out attention in the way that he has is specifically different than a normal content creator or even a person who is sick on the internet. They tend to provide really good, wholesome, positive information. I've noticed, and this is my little theory, there's a category of people that only have negative stories around being sick or negative and depressing stories around their image. And from what I understand about Jake's particular content, it's usually negative and it's turned a lot of people away. And so there's something there that is relatable to me where I notice that, again, I'm all here for people. I'm chronically ill. I'm mentally ill. I've worked on it. I've gone to the right doctors. I get it. I know being sick is hard. So I don't want this to come across like I'm dismissing someone for being sick. But there's a kind of performative sickness that exists in people that I think itself is a sickness, probably mental health related. And I wonder if Jake is having that problem just because it doesn't make sense for him to seek out woo-woo diagnoses and then to come for Ethan for a scientific one, even though Chat DPT is not Ethan diagnosing himself. He ran with that as if Ethan was trusting that. But then he trusted a doctor that got his license revoked. So what are we talking about? You know what I mean? Uh, new agey, one of the, one of the... Are they trying like, is it more like Eastern medicines type thing or is it like... It's... No, I would say it's a mix. Oh, okay, cool. Because I don't, I wouldn't go, like, I wouldn't travel to California for strictly Eastern medicine because I know right. that there's a lot of people who, um, Eastern people can, can, uh, be shitty when they have, like, when they're like, yeah, I think that this clover of, of ox dick is going to really work for you. And it's like, I <laughs> oh, flew 12 hours. Yep. Like, oh, yeah. And they, and they hand you a rock and yeah. they're like, just think about Hold it. Hold it to your heart. Yeah. 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 They, oh, no. Yeah. The amount of times people were like, no, it's the power of the mind that'll yeah, cure your you. cancer. Fuck and I'm you. like, fuck you. Yeah. No, it's, it's the, it's the medical drugs that are going to cure my fucking disease. Like, yeah. And hey, okay. You're better. So some acknowledgement about modern medicine over, you know, and maybe some Eastern practices work, but a lot of it is, is, not going to work in the same way. And a lot of Western medicine is about sort of like, I'm sorry to say, but like a money grab sometimes, but also not. So again, you know, and now I'm better, you know? Yeah. So. And uh, there's so many people I talk to and that's why I have that, the, the joke about yeah. it, but it's like, uh, the amount of people I talk to that they're like, you should try this mushroom extract. Oh, fuck you. And then I was like, did it work for that person? And they're like, well, no, they're dead. Yeah. I'm like, oh, then there you go. They're yeah. dead. Yeah. That's they great. died. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's okay. Great. Then I'm not fucking yeah. doing that. You know what? Actually, I think I'll consider it. Yeah, maybe I will do it. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll let this rare brain tumor just sit just and I'll sit. just drink mushroom tea yeah. and I'll hope that it doesn't explode. Okay, so I appreciate like them acknowledging that they're not going to take an alternative route that hasn't been proven to work. You know, okay, that's good. Bode in my fucking head. Yeah, I'm actually hoping like, like you know that there are always people that, that will do weird shit like that who are just like, yeah, I think that this will work. I remember a doctor was like, I think that, I think that if you wait it out, and see what it does to your body. Basically, what Lyme is, is in your blood, there's little spirochetes that sort of eat your good blood cells. Okay. And It's almost like chemo then. Kind of, yeah. It's eating like, so is it e eating like hemoglobin? Or is um, it eating like just any blood cell? It's eating It's eating away at like at, at certain things. Basically, that's why my knees broke. Right. Okay, so you, you're... Uh, so does that cause like, does that cause like, I don't understand like where I have, that lines up with your... I have, I have like a, I have a... a 
white blood cell deficiency. I have mm. like a lot of like, like it, it, right. It basically kills you from the inside out. Yes. Okay. A white blood cell deficiency is Jake's issue. Okay. Pete's okay. are like these, uh, they look like screws and they yeah. will, like drill through. So do you ever have to do like, cause I, when my white blood cells were low, I would get booster shots. Yeah. Of, I, uh, I, uh, but I know they're wildly expensive. Yeah. So I was lucky. I got, I got covered. Um, right. but I had, uh, I had something called immunoglobulin infusions. Okay. And they, uh, this is one of the things that really helped me. There was not, there wasn't one thing that saved my life. It okay, was, it, it was, was a, a mixture yeah. of things because yeah. my mom was up until 4 a.m. researching everything and in Facebook groups talking to other people wow. going through this. Like, this was like, it was her full time job on top of a full time job. Do you have siblings? Mm -mm. Wow, that's, no. that's, yeah. Which was really lucky. Well, for sure. And yeah. like, you're, so your mom, so it's literally just you and mom. Yep. And obviously you guys are still so close absolutely yeah i love yeah. that that's amazing well yeah. shout out to is it mrs doolittle yeah she, she, just, doolittle? she just got she just got married to my stepdad oh your stepdad yeah so how's really your stepdad fun. awesome he's awesome the best. i love that yeah yep. her name's I got tracy. A good her, tracy yep thank you for everything mm -hmm. tracy you're an incredible woman and i'm so happy you did interesting right isn't that interesting just like listening to him talk about it like barely like i wonder why he doesn't have any care about the fact that his doctor i'm so confused you know about the relationship between having a doctor whose license got revoked and like not thinking it's a big deal or why didn't the, you know, isn't that kind of sus? Irene says, I personally believe in a balanced approach in both practices. Like there are a lot of herbal reminders uh, I use for everyday issues, but med modern medicine has shown to save lives. Yeah, obviously like I'm a big fan of uh, medicinal, uh, like home herbal medicinal oriented solutions, but also go to a doctor, you know, so again, like, um, for me, I, you know, I tried to find the balance. I'm into whatever's the answer. Like, I'm not here to argue about a source. I'm here to argue about what's true. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Okay. So let's see. Did we hear where she's getting the research? So the, inf are you, I, talk I assume you're talking about me. So basically we've already gone over it so you guys are gonna have to go back to the beginning of the live stream but I'm just again I'm just a person I'm not making any accusations I just think it's interesting I'm just saying this is interesting oh the mom where the mom is getting the research sorry not me I got it that's interesting too like where is the mom getting the research how is she having the relationship with this information I think that's really interesting you know what I mean Tori says I also think it's a slippery slope into anti-vax territory yeah I am shook now, I understand, like, people's concerns and their initial fear of, like, government intervention, but I am shocked at how, like, quickly America or parts of America became anti-vax so fast. And I'm like, where did this come from? Like, such a weird decision to make um, when we know, like, vaccinations work. So it's just such an interesting decision to make as a human species. Now, I think we're animals evolved over time. So if we're looking at humans as, like, an animal species, it would make sense that parts of the animal species <laughs> would have like a relationship that would move them in a direction of sort of being anti, which is so interesting. I mean, if people are questioning if we live on a flat earth or a globe or whatever, then people are like, they're trying to reinvent the wheel again, which is fine. Like, but also, I don't know why you're not standing on the shoulders of giants. We already have so much research, but I, you know, okay, fine. Like if you want to spend your life that way, you do you. Okay. So let me see. I don't know if there's more into this conversation we need to listen to. Hold on, let's see. You did what you did because now she's I get the to. Best. I get. A, I get. I get to have a friend. <laughs> it makes me happy. She's she's the best. But it's like, like yeah, she did all this research because I couldn't. It's not like I could look something up. I'd fucking throw up. Like I would have hey, migraines. I would, I was sick. And, and like and also like, uh, she's also doing a great job at protecting you and trying to give you a childhood. Oh yeah. While you like. Because at the end of the day, that's this is another thing that goes mm. back to when people suggest uh, alternative medicine mm. shit. You don't know how I feel. Of course, you don't know the excruciating pain that I'm going through. Yeah, and that's so great that you ha that you want to help. Yeah. thank you. But you have no fucking idea. Yeah, how interesting. Amanda says I think he believes that what the doctor did was morally and ethically the right thing to do, so it's no big deal to him. Really, he thinks it's morally and ethically okay for a doctor to not see a patient to to diagnose them and to give them medication when they haven't even been seen? Who would think that's okay? Like, that's a horrible thing to do to somebody. Wait, like, who, why would that be okay? I mean, maybe he does think that's okay. That's kind of a crazy to think, that's a crazy thing to think is okay, right? Like, your doctor hasn't even seen you and they're diagnosing you and, give, and prescribing you medication. That's kind of crazy, right? Like, I don't know. How much pain I'm in. Yeah. And, like, that... 
I, I, I don't have an option here. Yeah. I can't just, I can't just uh, meditate like you, like, like you, uh, are, like, that's great that you have this ideal uh, plan for me and that you think that this will help. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I can't. I can't do it. I love the people that think that waiting is an option. Like, I'm yeah. in so much pain. This is not going to. Exactly. I either it will. If I wait, either it will kill me or I will kill myself. Yes, exactly. OK, OK. So he's he is saying he's sick enough that either it's going to unalive him or he's going to unalive himself, which I think, you know, again, I think Jake is probably sick. But I always wonder, like, again, I don't want to I, I feel so bad. I don't want to send the message out into the universe that I'm saying he's not sick with what he's saying he's sick with. I'm just saying if my doctor got their license revoked, I would probably want to re-diagnose. Like I would want another diagnosis. You know what I mean? So, I, you know. Um, Yaya says, Brittany, I wonder if this is, that is part of the meaning crisis. Like you can't prove God is real, but you can make up the proof that the world is flat, clinging to something that feels real. Yeah, I think ultimately we spend our lives fighting battles that are bigger than us so we don't have to face ourselves. We make up uh, or fill in the information in the mystery so we can feel confident about how to live our lives. We have a relationship with our consciousness to the level in which we're, we're willing to have it. And then everything else usually gets pushed down to the extrospective. You know, there's so many things that go into it. But, you know, Verveke, Dr., uh, Professor Verveke, John Verveke, if you guys are new to my channel, has a thing called The Meaning Crisis. Philosophy professor, really interesting series, highly recommend it. And that is the thing that seems to be missing from the world. And sometimes we replace our meaning with something so big outside of ourselves so we don't actually have to look inward and look at ourselves, you know. And I think that's the struggle that I'm always going to see with a lot of people. And it's fine. It's just we live in a society. And so we have to have questions about what society do we live in and how do we all function within um, society together. Like I was watching this anti-vax family on TikTok talk about how their baby isn't vaxxed. And I just, you know, and I get it. Like I have family members that don't always vax their kids or vax their kids fully or whatever. And it's always a question we're all having with one another, which is like, what are you supposed to do to protect your babies? And I understand the distrust of the medical community, but I also don't think there's enough evidence to assume it's really going to hurt your child in the way that it is probably going to actually help your child. I think harm reduction involves making sure that your fear, again, fear is the root of all evil in my mind. That's an exaggeration to prove a point. But I do think that your fear around misinformation in the medical community or malpractice is probably going to probably cause more harm than, than less harm. So again, I want to recommend that you stand on the shoulder, shoulders of giants that you listen to the med like the medical professionals, that you have that conversation with your doctors, and that you do give your kids the best care possible. You know what I mean? Oh my God, stop it. You know, thank you. Brittany's glowing today. I feel like I'm glowing today, but you know what? Who knows? I'm just, thank you. I had, I made myself an omelet, so maybe it's the eggs. I don't know. Um, so anyways, very interesting. Oh, Discord. Discord's chat has its own chat if you guys want to join through Patreon, support the channel. Discord says, the anti-vax thing has been happening for a long while. I remember a huge fuss about the HPV vax when I was a teen. I think, uh, could have just, I think COVID just impacted more people, so we heard about it more. You know, I got HPV. I did. Yep. I had a male partner who gave it to like four of us. It was a whole mess. And we went through the rounds of getting shots done and everything else. And we got the vaccination basically after the fact. It was a whole thing. And it was this, you know, we had to face the fact that we didn't know anything about the vaccination. Like here we were, all these like Seattle progressives. And we didn't even know, to be fair, we we're not from Seattle. So I had just heard about it in Seattle. But then I had a memory that my mom knew about the HPV vax because I asked her about it. And I said, didn't we have a doctor who recommended you give that to me? And she goes, yes, but I didn't want to do it because there was no reason. You were a child and you weren't sexually active. And I was like, damn, bro. If I had gotten that vaccine before I had been sexually active. And I think that's really interesting. My conservative parents, God bless them. They're wonderful people. And if you go for them, I'll go for your mom. I'm just kidding. But Literally, they thought I was going to like be a virgin when I got married, that I was going to marry the first person I slept with. How sweet. And they didn't get me this vaccination, which would have been really great in hindsight, you know, but I just think that's so interesting, you know, anyways, 
as me say Brittany saying uh, an omelet for the reason she's glowing. I mean that or the fact that, you know, <laughs> I got late. So, you know, <laughs> you know, sex and omelets. You know, I'm not sure which one does it more. Which one brings the glow more? Who knows? Ah, so interesting though, right? Okay. Exactly. Like I, a doctor told me after I had finished everything, after I had finished my treatment and everything, he said, it's a miracle that you survived that two weeks where we couldn't find your brain tumor. Mm -hmm. He was like, you were having... Uh, minor aneurysms and your brain was expanding so much mm -hmm. that he was like when you were having those headaches You were walking a fine line of dying. Yeah, he was like, it's incredible that you're still here Yeah, so that was like that's the thing. It's like thank you for the suggestion. Yeah, but I have doc doctors telling me I should be dead Yes, absolutely. So I don't have an I don't I don't I don't get to just Like eat some berries and hope it works. Yeah. Like I have to do it now. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's so frustrating That would be so intimidating to have like a tumor by the way if you're gonna like STI shame in this audience I will block you I will block you I will do it I will block you we are a sex positive channel you are not a bad person for having an STI okay I recommend having safe sex but I also recommend getting tested okay and I get tested before every partner look at you being so uncool in the comments bro don't try to shame people for having an STI as if 80% of you don't have herpes out here okay like, if you've looked at the statistical uh, probability that you have an STI, it's pretty fucking high, bro. Yes. Obviously, I have, I had HPV. I think I've talked about this probably before. I must have because I'm pretty open with it. But um, I got the vaccination after. Doesn't matter. Still shows up on tests. I'm married. And we did our testing before we had sex because we're responsible adults. You know what I mean? So no, no STI shaming in the comments. I will not stand for it. Okay. If you get ST, if you STI shame in the comments, like I will slap you. Most people are uneducated once when it comes to sex. You know what I mean? So you better watch yourself, sir. And at the time, um, it's very hard to test for male uh, people. That's why you often do get HPV because it's very hard to test men for HPV. It's basically impossible. So FYI. And yes, Maiden Monster, you can get STIs even when using protection. So everybody better relax, okay? Okay, Amber says my gyno says getting HPV is to be human. Let's go. Let's go, you know. Okay. Straight to me. So anyways, you're, you're, uh. <gasps> Thank you puppies for the representation. I got the full course of HPV vaccine and still tested positive for HPV. It's life. It's life. Your mom is advocating for you. You get this new doctor. Mm -hmm. I get this new doctor. She prescribes me like a mix of like antibiotics and, and supplements. And she puts me on uh, these, these drops, like these tinctures that basically, uh, basically kill all the spirochetes in my body right so with a mix of antibiotics and like these drops of all these weird fucking things and that's what i'll say as well so he got a new doctor after the old doctor okay the mixture of both is great absolutely that, that, I'm, and i don't want to dismiss Seriously. alternative medicine because it is mm -hmm. it's the combination of the two absolutely yes. yeah that's, anyways that's what that's what saves me was that's yeah yeah um but you have to find the things that help you okay so we did that i already put the link in chat but i'll put it again if you guys want to follow, just finish this podcast on your own i don't care about this i just cared about his doctor part now once again, no judgment. I put the also uh, the case law here. I'll put the link again if new people just came in. Here's the documentation on his former doctor getting his license revoked. If you guys want to read that on your own. Then I wanted to watch this video because I've never seen a Jake video really. And this is called Faking a Disability for Clout. It's nine minutes. And I thought, let's go see how Jake feels in terms of consistency. And let's see if we have anything to say about it. Because again, I'm not accusing Jake of anything. He's a person with a journey and I don't want to accuse him of anything. But it is one of those things where I just want to, ex I just want to observe it. I just want to observe. I'm just curious how a person doesn't get re-diagnosed from a different doctor, you know, or maybe, maybe I'm mishearing it. Maybe I'm misunderstanding it. Maybe there was another diagnosis. Maybe there wasn't. Maybe something went differently. Again, I don't want to accuse him of anything. Hi, sisters. It's Jake here. And I'm back with another. Okay. Again, saying hi, sisters to mimic James Charles. Total cringe. You should change that. I don't know why you want to be associated with somebody who hits on minors. Video. Before I get started, I just want to say thank you to all my patrons for sponsoring nice. this video, along with my clothing brand and fund for people with chronic illness. Never stop. The links to both of those will be in the description below. Okay. I am so excited that I'm finally talking about this topic. I have had this in my Google Doc of video ideas 
this for a very, very long time. We've got Brit Barbie, baby. Okay. Brit Barbie is a TikToker, Instagrammer, rapper who gives me like bad baby vibes. I mean, her name is Brit Barbie, but it's fine because uh, she's a Fashion Nova ambassador. Does she know that their clothes aren't made sustainably? Oh, Frankie says, honestly, the earlier part of the podcast where he talks about going to every single doctor in the state is way more interesting. See, that's so interesting. Why was he going to all those? Why was he going to all those uh, states to get diagnosed, you know? It's all right. I don't think she cares. So Brit Barbie, you may know her from her very, very popular. Just a reminder, we are not falsely accusing Jake of anything. TikTok, period, ah. So really good. Um, Now, I want to go into a little bit of a deep dive about Brit Barbie because not only is there some cultural appropriation going on, but I think that there may be some ableism, which is my absolute favorite and I cannot wait to show you. So we've got this first one, which is Brit Barbie's first TikTok on her account. Who drives this bus? Huh? Messing me up. What's this like a 12 year old? Am I watching a 12 year old person? Is this a child? Oh my God, I feel like I can never tell people's age. Just from our HPV information. Yes, Amber, I think we understood. Like HPV is for life. What is for life? Meaning like the cells can possibly create like cervical cancer later in the future. I've gotten the rounds of vaccinations after I got diagnosed, obviously. Um, so just FYI, get checked up, ladies. Get your pap smears. Get your checks. L make love to your cervix. Like pay attention to it, okay? Um, or people with cervix, just do your things. Do your doctor checkups, okay? So anyways, is this person a child? Because I feel like it's a little bit of a child. What you mean my hair grows from my skull? Okay. So apparently that's like a remake of a video made on her other account that was deleted. This one's sort of explaining her theory on who would have thought that her hair would be uh, grown from her skull. Yeah, so I just found something out. Actually, she's like probably like 16 to 18. I don't know how old this human is. Frankie says, I personally believe all of Jake's experiences. I still believe he's a victim of medical fraud and promoting it to other people is really dangerous. Yeah, there's a possibility of that too. Because I definitely believe like Jake is sick. I don't want to ever take that away from him. But I also want to understand sort of the journey. Like, look, we all go on a different journey to get diagnosed. Um, to be honest with you, maybe I should see another person to make sure that I have fibro. But I trust my rheumatologist. I trusted the doctors that I was working with. But it definitely is something to consider. So I never All right. I don't think that's how you speak. I will put money on it. I don't think that's how you speak. I've done a little research on this. I know that's not how you speak. You could be British for all I know. This could be a chav check. What? what? Maybe she's a little British. That smell, it's a black scent. Yeah, so I just found something out. So I never knew that your hair those nails are crazy from up here i never knew that i always thought that your hair grows from my right hair oh yeah this was like a wasn't this a meme a couple years ago wait this title is called faking a disability for clout but like this is a meme wait i'm so confused where's the disability the disability isn't in the the hair joke it's not a hair joke you know what i mean Hmm. And it just grows and grows and grows. Wait. I unplugged my own ear. I unplugged my earphones. Is there hair in my head? So <laughs> this kind of reminds me of like, you remember in high school, there were girls who would make like Snapchat stories sitting down going, this just came to me. Who makes water? This is what this reminds me of. Like a popular girl from your high school trying to be an influencer, except this actually worked, right? When I first found this account, she had like in the hundred thousand mark and now it's blown up more than I could have ever expected. And I love it. Here's another example of this natural voice. Somebody said, I'm so pissed your other account got deleted, lol. And let's hear her response. Me too, but you know what? You gotta just keep going in life because life is never gonna end. It's gonna end, but not. <laughs> Hold up. You started out with an accent and then it just fluttered away? That was insane. You sounded like a city girl and then went into like sounding like some- I didn't see a difference, damn. I didn't even hear a difference when I knew in preschool. Life is never gonna end. It's gonna end, but not. Okay, just totally forgot to keep the character going. This is when it really gets interesting. And I'm not the only one who thinks this. Brit Barbie has actually got a shit ton of backlash from the special needs community because something's happening here. Something's not right. Why is it that every time somebody meets me, they think I have Down syndrome? 
because like I normally just do this thing with my lip like this. Like, that's just my normal face. That's just how I look. Hmm. This makes me Girl. upset because I feel like she's making fun of people with Down syndrome, but also like she's doing this thing with her voice that isn't natural. Like, I... I <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I might get in trouble for this video. Actually, no, fuck that. I shouldn't get in trouble for this video because something's happening here and I don't understand it. Yeah, so I was talking to this guy on Instagram, right? And I was really feeling him or whatever. That? Oh my God, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. That is this? Why is it that every time somebody meets me, they think I have Down syndrome? What's happening? <laughs> yeah, so I, was I don't even understand this video. Like why? She's just a normal social media girl. Like I don't even understand what's happening talking to this guy on instagram right and yeah his content really is so empty his content is so empty i agree like i don't understand what are we watching <laughs> am i the only one who's like <laughs> offended by this what are you doing stop you look like a girl from utah who goes to church every day stop doing this it's like in a coming of age movie doing what what is she doing maybe i just watch a lot of tiktok everybody i don't know like she didn't she's not distinctly different to me. Where the girl takes off her nerdy glasses and she's so beautiful. This girl puts on her fucking caterpillar eyelashes and then she does a black scent. Everybody keeps telling me and asking me like what my condition is. I don't have one. Is he accusing her of racism right now? This is just how I look. Yeah, so I was talking to this guy on Instagram, right? You know what I love is the loop effect that happens when she starts in an accent and then loses it and then it starts over and then you- I mean, I got like 20 accents, Brett, because I talk different every time around different people, Brett. I mean, it's kind of crazy. But also I'm a part of TikTok that like everybody talks like everybody. So like I don't even know who actually has a real accent. I am so used to mimicking people at this point. I'm not even sure what my real accent is. I think I'm just a Cali girl, bruh. Okay, somebody on my video the other day, literally, tangent, somebody on my video the other day said like, I've never seen a girl who look more like a Britney than her. And I was like, me? I look nothing like a Britney. Most Britneys I know are like cheerleaders with blonde hair. I'm like a theater kid who was homeschooled like for a while. What are we talking about? And I was just like, oh my God, that's so interesting. But it's the way I talk. It's the way I talk. But like, yeah, I don't even know what, like, what are you mad at? Like, what is this video? You go, holy shit, this is how she started this I video. thought this was going to be about medical mis- This is why I don't- pre See, I don't pre-watch, so you guys have entertaining Britney for stream. But also, I literally thought this was going to be about medical stuff. I totally forgot. I'm hustle because I like to make my money. You should hustle too. Okay, this is how I think that this is a character, okay? It says, girl, why are you so hostile? And then she says, I'm hostile because I need to make my money. You should hustle too, okay? Meaning hustle. Obviously, this is a joke. It got 1.1 <laughs> million views and 100,000 likes. And I think that this is where we get into this strange territory of what are you? The character has gone too far. You have done this thing where you have these two personalities in your TikTok account. If you stuck to one, I wouldn't be making this video because because I can't accuse you of anything. How insane would it be if I was like, I think that you are faking a voice of someone with special abilities. But <gasps> go what? No. Okay, first of all, now I don't even know what the accusation is. The accusation is she's mimicking somebody with an <laughs> a a illness? No, I'm really what is this video? Going from one accent to the other. And it's kind <gasps> of uh yeah, it says all the Britneys I know are black. Well, here's another one you can know who's black. Thank you. You see me. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Hustle because I like to make my money. That is this. Why is it that every time somebody meets me, they think I have Down syndrome? I don't, I don't know. Oh, now I'm really confused. What? I don't know. Let's keep looking. Guys, my Amazon wishlist is in my bio, you guys. My Amazon wishlist is in my bio. Don't have to buy anything, but welcome to if you want to. <laughs> okay, so we've got, and this is a promotion for an Amazon wish list, which is great. Like, get that bag, get that period ad bag. I don't understand how this is okay. I don't think. Okay, you remember how I said Jake was neurodivergent? He's got to be autistic. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, he can't hear things. He can't, he can't be, is he really accusing her of saying she sounds special needs? Like, I'm so confused. What? Wait, the pay dirt says, is he saying she's faking a speech impediment? I mean, what? 
Krista says he's claiming she's talking like a she has Down syndrome, so that means she's faking it. Well, I feel like that's a like I feel like that's a lot. CJ's here. Hi, CJ says, dude, she's just playing around. Well, she's obviously just being like a young person on the internet, like making voices because like we all do it or whatever. But also like, huh? Who? Huh? Who? What is this accusation? I think it is because there are articles saying members of the autistic community call out period our rapper Brit Barb. Oh my God, it's the autist calling her out. Members of the autistic community. Guys, all my autists, put a one in chat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> put it. Put an emoji in chat. Thank you. Um, what? Members of the acoust acoustic community. Wow, Brittany. Autistic community calling out period a uh, rapper, Brit, whatever, allegedly faking her speech impediment. I'm so fucking confused. Barbie for allegedly faking speech impediment. And so all these people have duetted it. It's this whole thing. So this guy is interviewing her. What? And then in the middle of the conversation, she switches to this. Yeah. She's just from Wisconsin, bro. Literally what? It's okay because. But started out by saying this. I'm from Missouri. And then finally someone came. Missouri. She's from Missouri. Came out and said what I was thinking. Yeah, she's just like, she's just trying to be edgy and get like fucking clickbait, which is working, by the way. That's Brit Barbie that went viral for that video. Now, she pretends nowadays that she has some type of disability or fakes as if she does. So here's that. Hey, you guys, I went to Dollar General and I found... <sighs> She has literally said that she does not have a condition and I, I believe it because I think that this is to get like an easy laugh and it's gross. And I'm glad that people are now being like, hey, I don't think this is okay. Whereas five years ago, if somebody were to do this, they'd be like, oh yeah, no, that accent's really funny and you should continue to- I literally don't even hear it. I'm so fucking confused. She just sounds like a fucking teenager. Everyone sounds like that to me. Am I, there's a part of YouTube or TikTok where everyone sounds like that. I'm so confused. Literally, no offense to all of you, but like when I watch TikTok, 99% of people between the ages of like 18 and 22 sound like that to me. So now I'm even more confused. Discord says this content police bubble is so weird. Yeah, this is so strange. Discord also says, is it not normal to have multiple accents? I mean, I don't get it. Like she's obviously trying to get like popular and like that's what's seen as popular. So you're going to mimic the like, you know what I'm saying? to do it period at. hey guys i got a package in the mail like she's obviously from one of the white states and she's obviously also from one of the states that have like culture and also she has the nails and also she has the she's seeing it on tiktok like there's a lot that's going into this i just feel like she's not from seattle california or new york you feel me it's from one of my fans from my wish list we're gonna open it okay yeah i'm gonna be real everyone from the middle states sounds like that to me <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> so excited. Little backstory. <laughs> Little backstory. When I was like 13 to 15, I assisted a special abilities dance class and I was helping with a lot of people with developmental disabilities. Before YouTube, I did not have a job or a job that was reliable. So I was looking to train to be a one on one aide. It's so disappointing that this is like what's happening right now and how this person isn't canceled. I understand that it's a meme. Like, I understand that period ah is a meme, but this has 3 million views. Cases of the neurodivergence gatekeeping speech impediments, bruh. Ingrid says, do I, I sound like that? You just sound autistic, okay? Everyone's autistic. No, but like literally he's not reading it. Like, okay, again, you guys, this is why Gen Zers have a bad reputation because you think this matters, okay? This does not matter. This is like so unimportant. There's like so many other things to worry about. But also, okay, as if culture doesn't, impact people's reaction to things. I don't know. I'm just not, how could you have made, I would never have think, thought to make a video about this. I like would never have thought to like make this an issue. This right here is a viral TikTok and we're supporting it. Is this a way to get more attention on top of? If he says it's more because she's changing her accent, it sounds like she's mimicking or mimicking the accent to get attention. She is. She is trying to get attention. That's what I'm saying. It's like going after an influencer or a content creator who's trying to get attention by trying to get attention. She's not mimicking a, like an accent any more than getting the attention, but she's not 
that's what she sounds like. And she's changing her accent to get more attention. Both things are happening, but not in the way that he's accusing her. But also not in the way like she's not. She's just thinking about the attention she's getting. She's literally just thinking about the attention she's getting. She didn't sit here and plan it. People like, you know what I'm saying? Like she's not doing what she he says she's doing. Oh, this is where the nuance comes in. She wants the attention. That is number one. Okay. She wants the attention. Then people plan it in her mind. Then she rolls with it. But that's what she's doing. It's harmless, in my opinion, because she's doing a thing that only gets attention because you're giving it to her, which why I always say when you're mad at someone, you're only mad at yourself. When you're mad at other people, you're not mad at them. You're mad at yourself for wanting different from them, for the way they impacted you or the way you feel about them. Like I could never be mad at this girl because like I understand what she's doing and why she's doing it. Cool. Okay. You want attention? No. You know what I mean? So again, I know if you're new to my channel, this might seem weird, but this is a philosophy channel where we talk about the consciousness and like your role in the universe and your relationship with yourself is basically your only real obligation. Even then, I'm not going to put that on you because I think we're evolved animals on a planet. I don't think there's objective morality. So I'm not going to go after this girl because it doesn't impact my morality, right? Like I don't, I don't think it's objective. I think it's obviously subjective. But I think the world is a reflection of us as a collective. So if you're mad at the world, be mad at yourself first. Okay? Like, you know what I mean? I was watching this other video on TikTok. Hold on, I'll finish this. And then let's see if I save that video because I wanted to show you guys that too. Um, about a girl that saw a video and she thought it was for her, but it wasn't for her. Remember, sometimes you're going to see content on your timeline that's not about you, not for you. Keep moving. Keep going. It's not about you. It's not for you. You know? It's okay to use it to show your audience. Like I always choose, I always find content that's not for me to give my audience an idea of what you don't have to be because sometimes these bubbles convince you like that's the only way to be. And I think I want to make sure, like I make it clear to you, like you can be anything you want to be. You got to ask yourself, you know, like why is Jake upset? Like why is he making this video, you know? Of the rap career? Because I feel like I'm missing something. Good morning, you guys. You guys like my necklace? Period. Ah! Okay, guys, we're gonna open my blind bags now. Hey, you guys. Um, that's they, Miranda sings. Hey, you guys. Um, they just banned me from going live, so I have to wait till the twentieth to go live again. That's a different voice. That's a completely different voice. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, that's so weird. Like, okay, like that's what I'm saying. Like, why is he making faking a disability for clout? Like, why is he blowing this up? Does but he but he's doing it because it gives him views and it gives him views and it gives everyone views. Do you want know to saying? This is such fake outrage. This is why I said Jake comes off like a virtue signaling person. He's virtue signaling. It's not even real. He doesn't care. There's no way he cares about this. And the same way that like with the Ethan thing, I'm telling you, there's an ickiness and virtue signaling that I really hate in people. And I think again, I don't hate anybody, but you know what I mean. It's like that, you know, you're having that weird outrage for something that isn't even out that outrageous you know what i mean it's just silly you know fuck you fuck you fuck you and then just to put the icing on the cake brit barbie had a meetup in detroit and people showed up you already know who's here man you know your girl brit barbie bro represent okay she cannot walk in those heels. What's up? Leave her, leave her alone. Walking in heels is a t skill. It takes time. What's up? What's up? What's up? I can't believe this is real. P -P <laughs> You're a grown man. It's a lot of people. This guy came alone to a Brit Barbie meet and greet. If that ever happens to me, please just take me out back. Mm. Literally chop my head off. Holy shit. You know, actually, I would love to go to the next Brit Barbie meet and greet. I have a couple questions, Brit. Why Wanna come on my channel? Though? I have a couple questions. I'd love to interview you, Brit. Thank you for appropriating not one, but two things on your TikTok. Actually, let's make it three because Miranda sings. We're yeah, what a weird take, bro. Okay, so again, <laughs> Discord said this guy is an expert uh, hater. He is. So again, to sum up the Jake Doolittle part of this <laughs> live show, I think it is interesting that somebody could make a living being negative and being uh, virtue signaling and 
being upset that someone's faking a disability for clout while somebody's running around saying they have chronic Lyme disease, which isn't even like val- valid according to medical communities. So again, like what does it mean to fake something for clout? He's mad at a girl for changing an accent. I'm a little upset that he's not concerned that his doctor got his license revoked. But you do you. No hate on Jake. He's a person on a journey. Now, I want to answer this question in chat because, Patty, you brought up. I love this conversation, bro. Sorry, new to the channel. Welcome. So you've probably explained already. But how do you think about violent crime and a philosophy without objective reality? Um, So, okay, when I think about or objective morality, I think about humans as evolved animals on a planet. I don't know why you guys think we're here. Like, I don't know if you believe in a god or aliens or whatever. But I think we're probably most likely evolved organisms that have evolved over time to create what we know now. So we're no different from the bear, no different from the ant. We're only different because we perceive ourselves as different because perception is our reality. And though there is an objective T truth, something outside of our perception, we having access to it is really difficult, right? You ever hear somebody have a conversation and we all disagree about what we heard? Well, outside of that perception, I do believe there is a reality, but whether or not we can access it, that's the question, right? That's the journey I'm on. So when I think about violence within the world, I think of it as a part of nature. Every form of violence is within nature because humans are nature. So I try to have a balanced relationship with acknowledging my feelings when people have caused pain and evoke violence, which causes me to have feelings about it. But then I try to remind myself that this is a part of their nature. And then on top of that nature, we have formed societies. And so within that society, we can have a conversation about what to do with humans when their version of having a relationship with their biology or nature turns them on other people. So in society, which is a construct, and there's many different kinds of societies around the world, right? Within some societies, we're going to have a, a a rule that says if you grape somebody, you're going to get this punishment. If you stab somebody, you're going to get this punishment. If you have an, a, you know, an affair, you're going to have this punishment. If you do this, you're going to have this punishment. And I don't believe in a punishment as much as rehabilitation, though I understand some humans evolved over time are going to make sort of bad decisions every time they come out. But as bad as a subjective concept, you know, but. Again, as a society, we can come up with ethics, but as individuals, we form our morals, right? So I don't think there's anything that's objective. I think there's only what we can do, okay, to the best of our ability to form a reasonable and rational society, though lots of societies around the world also believe in religion and gods and you know what I mean? So again, what is reasonable and rational? And then on top of that, we have to, you know, have a sort of, consensus or a reality consensus that we're all not all going to agree on the nuances when we come down to the micro of society. So to answer your question, the reality is that violence is a part of nature. Everything we do is a part of that nature. And then we still have to form societies around that reality that humans are by nature somewhat destructive and violent, right? Uh, Yeah. Nunfosos, is it weird that I couldn't understand what he's talking about? I know people with Down syndrome and she's mimicking them. Yeah, I guess. Like, but even if she was, Again, why do we think that's bad? Can we come up with arguments that it's always bad, right? Is it always bad to mimic people, even if the people are in the room, if it's funny, if it's wholesome? Is there an objective rule to this or does it hurt our feelings, which is valid but subjective? And is there a reality where the world doesn't revolve around that? So that's the question you have to ask yourself. Is it offensive? Is it funny to some people? How do, you fe- how do you feel about people with special needs being put on TikToks about their family members posting them? How do you feel about people posting children? How do you feel about, it's always about what you think and feel. So I I'm, I'm understand the initial dislike or maybe distaste and the mimicking of the accent or of the way they speak. I could totally see that. But obviously she's trying to get it for views, right? No matter if it's mimicking another YouTuber or mimicking somebody with Downs or mimicking So again, we have to ask ourselves the question, um, okay, and then what? What do you want to do with this girl? Do you want to kill her? Do you want to put her in prison? Like, what do you want to do with her? You want to ban her from ever getting work done? Like, what do we want to do to this girl? Do you want to be society that evokes violence on a a teenager on a TikTok making a funny voice? You know, what do you want? What kind of a society do you want? I certainly don't want a society that evokes violence on teenagers being dumb on the internet, right? So Ania says, people are dying, Kim. Like, seriously, does this really matter? I just, I think people, 
pay attention to what they can pay attention to because it's within their realm of uh, I can handle this. I can care about it. You know, Peter says the fact is autistic people came out against her, not people with Down syndrome. So overall, what was even the point in the end? We can't even say who she's mimicking. <laughs> Wait, that's a great point. That is a great point. Wait, we don't. <laughs> when someone's mimicking a Downs person, you think it's about you because you have autism. <laughs>